Welcome. In this example, we are going to look at how to use the rich text component to build an editable block. Now, the rich text block can be found under Gutenberg blocks, and there's some decent documentation here on all of the different properties that go along with it, but basically what it is going to provide is an editable input field. So this editable input field, which is kind of more of a text area, also is called rich text because it can do things like bold and italicize and have some of the teeny MCE functionality built right into it. So we can see this in action by coming in and going under blocks and we are looking at the example, rich text. So we'll go ahead and fire that up and you can see the rich text field here. So here is my message. It can be multiple lines and we can determine how these multiple lines appear but basically this is what's going on here. Now I still have an H2 so this is not editable. However, if I click down into this area, it is. And you can do styling here to let people know whether something is editable or not, but a lot of places in Gutenberg, you just kind of write and you expect it to be interactive. So that's kind of the same thing that we have going on here where if there is nothing there, then placeholder text appears, but if there is a message, then we go ahead and see that. Now on the front end, that is just going to appear again as static content. So it's rich text and it's editable on the back end, but on the front end, we'll just see whatever is supposed to appear there. I'll also point out that this can be italicized as well as bolded just by using the keyboard shortcuts. So we don't have the toolbar set up here. However, all of that is built in and works by default and it should display properly on the front end as well. So that's what rich text looks like in action. Let's go ahead and take a look behind the scenes at the code used to set this up. So coming into our second example, rich text, we're going to come into our index file. We can see at the top here, we've got icon and our style.css. So our icon for this one is this little cursor here, and this is just an SVG that we have inside of our icon.js file that we have ported over. And this is, again, gonna be a pretty common thing if you want custom icons, you could either save them one by one in different components so that they're easy to access, or you could give them different names, have an icon library, or have a one master icon object that has all of them stored within that. So however you decide to set up your icons, that's what we're doing here at the top. Pull in the internationalization and register block type. Then we're also going to pull in rich text from WP blocks. Now remember when I said up here that rich text appears inside of blocks within the Gutenberg source code, and that is important to know because that is how we're going to reference it and pull it in. And how did we know to reference it and pull it in? Well, that's something you just kind of have to know from looking at Gutenberg that rich text is one of these common, really helpful fields for editing text. So we pull that into our code, we set up all of the basic stuff as we would expect. So I'm not really going to go over any of that. And then we come down into our attributes. Now, the difference between this and our static block is our static block didn't have anything dynamic that needed to be taken care of. However, when we have editable data, then we do have to set up attributes. And in this one, we are using an attribute we're calling the message. Maybe we could call this content. You could refer to it as a lot of different things. but we're gonna call it message, it's completely arbitrary. Uh, you could change this name and it'll do the same thing, we just have to change all instances of it. So let's hop ahead for a second and look at the different places where that is used. We could see down here, we'll pull out reference to it under attributes. When we're fed the props, then all of these attributes we have are set up and available as well. And down here for our rich text edit field, we will set the value to be this message and then when it is changed, we'll go ahead and update that message as well. So we're gonna be using this message a few times. Generally, when we have an attribute, we'll want to set it as a default value somewhere, and we'll also wanna do some sort of updating if the person has access to edit that, which is likely. Now the source type children, again, that just means that we have some sort of editable content there, usually a React element, and definitely whenever we're using rich text, which is what we're looking at here, then we want to set up type array and source children. In fact, this source children was really made in part to work with something like rich text where you have different elements with inside it. And then we need the selector. We talked about this in the attribute section. So if you're a little unsure how that works, you could go back and rewatch it after this video. 
Again, it may take a few times before all of that makes total sense, but the selector is going to match a class name that we put in the save component wrapped around where that attribute will appear. So when it's finally saved and it needs to open back up into the editor, it will say, okay, find message body, pull out everything that's inside of that and assign that to message. And then we could use that wherever we want in the edit area, which is going to be in this rich text area. Okay, so that is our attributes. We come down into our edit field. Notice how we're deconstructing props. First, we pull out anything inside of attributes. So we have props.attributes.message and we just wanna call it message. We also have props.classname and props.setAttributes. Now the class name we said was the name of this that was created dynamically based off of this. And then setAttributes is a built-in function to our WordPress React API that will allow us to update the value of attributes in memory. So every time there is a change to this rich edit field, it will go ahead and update itself. Now, this whole thing we could pull out like this, and this is what you'll see in a lot of examples later, and you'll see that just written right there. But for just starting off, I wanted to pull it out as a separate function just so you could see what was going on. So we're pulling all this stuff out, we're writing an event handler for when this changes. The H2 we don't really have to worry about. Now we can finally get into rich text. Now, when we're using these built-in WordPress components, the first thing we wanna do is figure out what's the name of it. In this case, it's a rich text, and then we wanna figure out the properties. Now I show you the documentation that lists out all of the different properties that you can pass into it. However, these ones here are going to be some of your most basic. Now, tag name and multi-line. Tag name is going to be the actual wrapper that is appearing as rich text. So we could see rich text here, but when it's actually in the editor, we are going to replace rich text with a div. So this entire rich text edit area where will appear inside of a div. And then when they hit enter, because you could break it down into multiple lines, each one of those lines will be a paragraph. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and open this up and come down here. So we've got our div with blocks rich text, and then everything inside of that is going to be our rich text editor. And when we have multiple lines here, notice that each one of them is their own paragraph. Okay, so that's what it's saying, that it's going to take our rich text component, convert it into a div, and then every time you hit enter, it's going to be a paragraph. Now this is probably the most basic setup you'd want, but what happens if we want to change this? So what I could do is instead of tagging name div, I'm going to change this to an li and a ul. So this is gonna convert it from a div with paragraphs to an unordered list with list items. So now if I reload my page and I check this out and I go ahead and inspect it, we could see that we have our list item and here is another and another and notice that each time we hit enter now we're creating more list items which is just what we defined so this could be really helpful like i said a lot of times you're probably just going to have paragraph tags but it may be that you want to do other things as well and you can do that so just remember rich text does not have to just be a text area it could be different types of things as well and that is how you would configure it. Now placeholders should be pretty straightforward and you definitely wanna have placeholders because it's not always super clear where you could edit except edit anywhere within Gutenberg. So you wanna have placeholders letting folks know what's there and make sure that they are translatable. Now on change, this is going to be a little bit of a special function. It won't update every single instance that a key is pressed or released, but it will do it pretty often and is going to be the default way that we want to update that attribute. So what happens here is, let's just stop editing for a moment. This is the current value of the attribute. I click out of the field, this is what it is. I click back in here and I enter another line that on change has already fired. So in memory, every single time I make an edit here, it is going to remember what the new value is for message, and then when I save, because I'm referring to message here as part of what's saved, then it will also get saved into the database that way. So the on change is just going to be tra keeping track of making sure that message is kept up to date, and both React and WordPress help us out quite a lot in simplifying this, and like I said, this code could be put down here, so we 
we'll likely see it like this just to save on space, but in this case, uh, just as an example, we're gonna break it out into its own function. And finally, value. If you've done any work with forms and presetting form values, then you know that you want to pull in that default message value if you have it. And if not, if this is empty, because you're just creating a new block, then the placeholder text will show. But if there is a value, then that will go ahead and display there. So this is how you use rich text. Like I said, you're probably going to be using this quite a lot, although we will look at some other form fields if you need something a little bit different. But if you need something that has bold and italics available, that has multiple line editings and kind of a super lightweight WYSIWYG fashion, then rich text is definitely what you're looking for. And I think you'll use it quite often. So that's why we're putting it up front and early here. So at this point, what I suggest is, again, make sure that you have NPM install and NPM run dev up and running. And then I'd go ahead and just start playing around with this. Change this to something else and make sure that you could keep it all working. Maybe instead of just one rich text thing, you have two of them and you set up two different um, attributes to work with two different types of properties, right? You'd have to obviously change these names, but that could be something else you play with. But either way, go ahead and jump into the code, try to break stuff, try to get it doing something slightly different because this is how you're going to get more comfortable with everything up and running. And once you're comfortable with that, we're going to shift gears a little bit from looking at editable data and start looking at some of the toolbars and sidebars that are available for us to work with inside of Gutenberg.